Okay, so let's practice transcription and translation. Um, so here's the original strand of DNA, and the messenger RNA comes along and um, writes it down, um, but it doesn't exactly write it down. It does the complement. So you're like, okay, T codes to A, G, C, C goes with G. Okay, so this is A, C, G. Good, I got it right. A codes to T. Oh, wait, this is RNA, so it's got to be a U. G comes C, T becomes A. So U, C, A. Yep. And then T codes for A, C codes for G, A codes for T, but now it's U because messenger RNA. So A, G, U. All right, so we do the complement for each one. So how many codons are there? Well, every set of three is a codon. So right here, there are how many codons? Three. All right. Then the messenger goes and codes to the transfer RNA that, remember, they're the ones, T for transport. They run and fetch the right amino acids. So then this code gets translated again. So the opposite of A is U. C goes with G. G goes with C. So A becomes U. C becomes G. G becomes C. And then the next one, U goes with A, C goes with G, A goes with U. And the next one, A goes with usually T, but in RNA it's U. G goes for C, U goes with A. All right, so we've gone through like a series of transcriptions, translations. If you don't quite follow how it goes, DNA to messenger RNA to tRNA, that's okay. Just know that like the different letters code for each other. And then this... Uh, this code in the messenger RNA, in fact, you can not even worry about the um, tRNA. This code in the messenger RNA is what codes for the actual amino acids we're going to get. So we go back to the messenger RNA and we say, okay, messenger RNA was ACG. So let me check my messenger RNA, ACG, ACG. Okay, so my first one, I'm expecting it to be THR, 3 and E. Let me see if I got it right. Yep, 3 and E. Um, my next one is UCA. Okay, UCA. Let me go back. UCA. So I could just look, look over. I like to go UC. UCA is serine. Okay. Um, yep, SCR. And then my last one is, I'm going off the messenger RNA, is AGU. So I go back here and I go, okay, AGU. A. G, U, another S-E-R, serine. Even though it's different letters, they code for the same thing. All right, so that's how I do it. I take my DNA, transcribe it to messenger RNA. Don't even worry about the tRNA. And then I take this messenger RNA, I look up the codons, and I see what amino acids they code for. So the first part, that was transcription. The translating part, that's translation. Pause this, pause. Um, so that brings us to genetic mutations, right? You've heard of mutations. Um, if your DNA gets mutated, it could cause cancer or it could cause genetic disease or it could cause nothing, okay? So a mutation is when part of your code gets mutated. It gets messed up. And so maybe your DNA gets messed up and then it codes for the wrong messenger RNA and then that codes for the wrong amino acid and now your protein's made incorrectly and now maybe your protein doesn't work, okay? Um, and that causes some sort of problem, um, maybe cancer, maybe some sort of disease. Um, so here's the different things in the environment that we know cause uh, mutations. Um, some of them just totally happen randomly. It's just bad luck. But some of them we know, like we know x-rays cause mutations. That's why um, if you're a female and you're getting like dental x-rays or you broke your arm, they'll say, before I give you this x-ray, is there any chance you could be pregnant? Because that little baby, um, we don't want that little baby getting mutations, um, one, because it's really small, and two, because it's just in its early stages of development. Um, so x-rays we know cause mutation, but when it comes to like getting our teeth fixed, we're like, okay, I'll take a little bit of x-rays if that means that I can have healthy teeth. Um, UV rays, we know that um, <clears throat> skin cancer is caused by ultraviolet radiation, getting too many sunburns. Cigarette smoke, we absolutely know that cigarette smoke and now vaping um, cause cancer. Why? Because they cause mutation to this DNA 
then it codes for the wrong messenger RNA, then you get the wrong um, amino acid sequence and now your proteins are messed up and now something in your body's not working right. Um, we figured out lead, we used to use lead in paint and even kids toys and then we went, whoa, that actually damages the brain cells. Um, PCB is a chemical that's given off by um, plants like factories and it gets into like the surrounding water, like the Hudson is known for having a lot of PCBs and pesticides, stuff we try to just kill off the bugs to keep our food healthy so we can grow lots of good crops, but then we end up covering our own food and chemicals and now we're eating chemicals. Um, so these are all things that can mutate your DNA, can hurt you, maybe will, maybe won't, depends on um, your body, how your body works. All right, so let's look at what happens when you mess up your DNA a little. Somehow it gets mutated. So let's say that this one right here gets mutated. So this DNA instead of, uh, oh no, wait, let's do this one. So instead of this being a C, let's make it a T. Then this instead of coding for G codes for A. Now I've got ACA. Let's see how that messes up what amino acid I'm gonna get. So I go back to ACA. Okay, so it was ACG. When it was ACG, I got threonine. Now that it's ACA, I get threonine. So this particular genetic mutation co codes for the exact same um, amino acid. So this particular D, uh, DNA mutation is totally harmless. So sometimes you just get lucky. That's why they'll say like, oh, everything causes cancer. Like but you're like, oh, I've inhaled like smoke before. By I had sunburn and I didn't get skin cancer. Well, sometimes you just get lucky. Um, you have 3 billion little codons um, in your DNA and it, sometimes one gets messed up and it just still ends up coding for the same thing. So you end up being okay. If you have too many in your life, one of them might be bad and then you might end up with something like cancer. All right, let's look at a different random mutation. So uh, you go out in the sun, you get uh, kind of a sunburn. Uh, this mutates, you end up with a T where you should have a G, and now the T codes for, um, actually, no, let's make this uh, U, because, uh, no, sorry, T, um, and then that codes for an A. So now I have AAG where I was supposed to have ACG. So let's look up what that does. I'm supposed to be coding for THR threonine, but now I have AAG instead. So let's see what happens, AAG. Okay, now I've coded for a different amino acid. Now I have a different amino acid. I have LYS, lysine. Now what I was building is messed up. I have the wrong amino acid in there. And what could happen is now it's maybe your protein is built the wrong way with the wrong stuff. Um, and you have a protein that now doesn't work the way it's supposed to and you get sick or nothing could happen. Proteins are like over a hundred amino acids long, maybe messing up one in certain circumstances, it just doesn't make a big deal. It's just one little small part of a big chain. It Maybe it's kind of one that doesn't have a big role and sometimes nothing happens. So genetic mutations, what do they do to you? Uh, cancer, genetic disease, or nothing. It just depends how lucky you are. Okay, so I shouldn't say that it's just luck or uh, being lucky or unlucky. It's also how much you're exposed to. Say you're only exposed to a little bit, you'll probably get lucky. But if you keep exposing yourself to cigarette smoke over and over and over and over, um, you probably won't get lucky. And one of those times it's going to cause a genetic mutation that's going to lead to cancer. And that's why you see significantly higher uh, lung cancer issues in smokers and people who vape. So the more you expose these things to, uh, to yourself, the more likely you are to get unlucky and to have one of these mutations. So that's why people when they're older are more likely to get cancer because they've had a whole lifetime of being exposed to this stuff. Um, so what else can happen when you get these genetic mutations? Well, sometimes your body goes in and repairs it. Sometimes your body goes AUC. Oh, no, 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 no. That's supposed to be AGC. And it actually, we have this 
polydamerase that goes in and repairs it. So that's another thing that can uh, that can be your genetics. Maybe you have really good enzymes, DNA polymerase, that repairs um, your DNA really well, and you're going to live a long life like my grandma who smoked for years and lived to be 97 because she probably just had a really good DNA repair system. Um, and maybe you don't, and you're not going to be so lucky, and you do need to stay away from um, things that are going to uh, mutate your DNA. Again, another reason that older people are more likely to get cancer is this whole DNA repair system. Um, as you get older, it wears out and it doesn't work as well. So last thing is different types of mutations. So let's see if this is your original DNA. So this is your original strand of DNA. And let's look at, take a look at our first type of uh, mutation, substitution. So substitution is just a substitution. Uh, substitute. Today, instead of A, we have T, just for that one thing. So let's see how that affects our codons. So our first codon here, uh, codons are a set of three, is CAT. This one's still CAT. The next one is TAG. Oh, this one's now TTG. So we'd have to go to the chart and see, okay, is that going to be a big change or not? Even if it is changing amino acid, maybe not so bad. Next one is GAT. This is still GAT. So substitution can be a bad mutation, but it also not be that bad because it's just one little change in one little codon. The next one is deletion. Okay, so again, this is our original DNA, and this is one that's had, um, instead of substituting out of one of these little letters, these bases, um, we're going to just take it out. And let's see, do you think that'll be a worse mutation or a better mutation than like a substituting one? So let's take a look at what it does to our codons. So our first three here are CAT, first three here, still CAT. Um, the next three are TAG, now next three are AGG. So that's not just a change of one instead of TAG, TTG. This is now totally different AGG. Let's keep going. The next one now is GAT. Next one here is AT something. So you can see what happens when you delete one is everything shifts. And now like each codon after that is now like totally different. It's a lot worse than this one where it was just one codon was one letter different. So a deletion code, a uh, deletion mutation is going to be much more harmful. And the same thing goes for addition. If I add one little letter in there, now every code, every codon after that is going to be shifted. So CAT is the same, TAG is the same, but now it's GGA and so on. Everything gets shifted instead of just one little change like in the substitution. And then inversion is when you take one of codons and you invert it so you totally flip it so instead of TAG it's now GAT and that is going to cause a totally different amino acid and that could be a problem but it's not as bad as like shifting every codon and changing every codon from that mistake on it is just one mistake among, among like three billion um, uh, base codons um, so it might not be so bad so if you had to have a genetic mutation, and you probably do somewhere in your body and you're, you're okay, um, you'd want it to be substitution or inversion, don't really want an addition or deletion. Why is it so bad to have one of your amino acids change? Well, remember, Remember like the amino acids, remember when we took those like stretch, those tubes that you could like bend and put into a, a circle um, or whatever shape you wanted? Um, and we were showing how uh, proteins fold in different shapes. Well, it could be if you change one of these little amino acids that now the whole thing folds in a different shape um, and now that protein cannot do its job because remember, shape determines function or job. So if you mess up your DNA, that messes up your codons, which gives you the wrong amino acid, which makes your protein go into the wrong shape, which now it can't do its job. And now you have some sort of illness. So the classic example of this is sickle cell anemia. So remember when I said one change in one little letter is you're probably going to be okay and you normally are. Sickle cell anemia is an example where you just changed one little letter and you get this dramatic change and big problem. So in sickle cell anemia, if your DNA was supposed to be GAG, it changes just to GTG. That one little change 
causes the wrong messenger RNA, causes one wrong little amino acid. And that protein is like 300 amino acids long. But that one little amino acid that was changed because of that one little change in a DNA base causes this shape blood cell instead of this shape blood cell. And they call it sickle cell anemia because your blood is the shape of a sickle. It's like... Um, it's kind of like a machete that people use like to chop stuff. So it's like a blade, like a circular blade. But anyways, it's called sickle cell anemia because your um, blood is shaped like a sickle. Um, so now your blood isn't good at doing its job anymore. Um, so it's your blood's job is to have a little oxygen sit right there, just like it's traveling in a little tube um, down a lazy river through your blood. But now that it has this weird shape, it's not really good at holding oxygen. So it can't really do its job and you become sick. So here's how mutations work. If you mess up your DNA, that messes up your RNA. If you mess up your RNA, you're going to get the wrong, and this should say before protein, you're going to get the wrong amino acid. And if you have the wrong amino acid, you're going to get the wrong protein. And if your protein's shaped the wrong way, it's going to not be able to do its job. So DNA determines RNA, determines amino acids, determines proteins, uh, shape, and then the protein shape determines whether it can do its function. Um, so here are a couple other genetic diseases. Um, a harmful one is progeria. Um, one little gene has a problem with it, uh, is mutated, and uh, people end up looking like like this uh, old before their time, like these are young kids, um, and they die in their early teens, which is sad. Um, so sometimes one... Uh, um, one little mutated gene can have a uh, really bad consequence. Uh, once in a while, a mutation actually does like a good thing. Um, like, oh, well, maybe this could be a good thing. There is a, um, a missing myostatin protein, which causes like super duper muscles. Uh, myostatin is supposed to control muscles uh, growth. So you can see in this dog or like this mouse compared to this mouse or this little, um, kind of ripped baby here or this really ripped cow um, that they have like excessive muscle growth. And in some cases that could be a good thing. Maybe this is a bit much, um, but it's just the same as like, we used to not have opposable thumbs. And then one day there was a mutation. Now people have opposable thumbs. And that was actually a good thing. That was actually really useful. So we'll talk about that in evolution. Um, but just to sum up, mutations are changes to your genetic code, which then mess up your um, amino acid sequence in your proteins, and now your proteins can't do their job because they might have the wrong shape, and shape determines function. Okay, so just to sum up mutations, what happens is your DNA base sequence, the A's, T's, G's, and C's, determines your amino acid sequence in proteins, which determines the shape of proteins, and then the shape determines the function of the proteins. So if you mess up any of these steps along the way, now your body doesn't have properly functioning proteins and it's gonna result in some sort of disease like a genetic disease or cancer. Or maybe if you're lucky, something good, or maybe if you're lucky, nothing at all. <laughs>